Hey Swifters, I'm Simon Schofield and this is the Swiftcast, coming up on this episode. Rachel Elliott talks to us about her stroke, her recovery and the huge outpouring of support from the Swift community. Meet Jordan Rapp, a new hire at Swift and a man with a plan for workout mode. And behind the scenes with Nathan, a fascinating glimpse of how the voice of Swift Racing gets it done. And I'm delighted to say we're joined by the usual crew from uh, the land down under, Shane Miller. Good day, mate. Good afternoon, evening, morning. How are we? Uh, very well. You've been upsetting people with rocker plates. We'll discuss that in a little uh, in, a, in a little moment. Uh, from the land sure. of the three, uh, land of the free, even <laughs> land of the three. Nathan Gary, yo, dude. Hey, how's it going, Simon? Well, let's get going. Um, Shane, we'll discuss this in a little more detail later on. But you've had a, you've had a, a, a tinker with the latest thing to hit virtual cycling, which is rocker plates. Just give us your twenty word sum up, and we'll go into it in a little more detail later on. Oh, very popular, um, mm-hmm. very rocky. Not what I expected. Uh, the future, it will happen. Not quite yet. Where have I heard that before the future, but not quite yet? Um, Nathan, uh, news this week that the Tour of California is going to start in, of all places, Long Beach. Swift's going to love that. Yeah. And uh, (laughs) hopefully be all over that. So I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of Swift and TOC stuff going down. So we'll see how that plays out. I think they'll actually be able to see the start banner from uh, by looking out the window at the, uh, the Zwift offices, which is going to be very exciting for everybody in uh, Zwift in Long Beach and probably everybody in, in Zwift Virtual, actually, because I'm sure there'll be a lot done around that. And speaking of Long Beach, let's kick off with a kind of rare glimpse behind the curtain. Um, people will know I've spent a few days at Long Beach recently, had the good fortune to sit down for a long chat with John Mayfield, uh, we talked about a number of things, lots of material in the bag, which you're going to be seeing uh, coming out over the next few weeks as we get new features rolled out. But John did disclose, I don't know whether it's a secret or even a revelation, but it surprised me. Uh, so uh, it's not particularly tied to anything. I'm free to release it. So here's John's little surprise. Typically, we have at least one expansion planned out at any given moment. Uh, Currently, we're working on a new map. Uh, So that's taking more of the design thought right now. Um, But there's actually actually parts of Watopia that we have kind of sketched in, and there's even some hidden areas that are are locked to the public that we sort of thought we were going to ship earlier and haven't. So they're there, but we just can't get there. They're sort of there. They're not fully filled in. I'm sure, you know, I'm sure somebody will figure out how to, like, get off the road and end up in wherever this uh, place is and post a screenshot, but... (laughs) So you're telling me there's some kind of secret hidden valley somewhere. There's plenty of thought that's gone into Watopia, and some of the things don't, don't pan out, but there's remnants of it there. There's other areas that we will finish um, building out later and people will see it then. Um, you do realize this is going to set an awful lot of people investigating very Pretty strongly. sure there's no way to get to the area. Uh, but, you know, who, they, may, they may prove me wrong. Area, area 51, it's this, it's this Swiss Area 51. Uh, I can't say anymore. <laughs> Nathan, that's all very intriguing, isn't it? Some kind of like parallel universe inside inside Watopia. I mean, I, I guess what that shows us is, should they preview stuff that's coming down the line? So most games don't give all the wow factor right up front unless they need to do a lot of mass testing. A lot of online games will release and see how things play out in the beta, um, in, in, in the beta version of their game or in the test uh, servers, essentially. That'd be kind of cool to have some of that testing stuff. I mean, I was thinking more of it as a kind of promotional tool, actually. Um, you know, uh, Star Wars released trailers like years before before the film comes out. Um, Shane, I know you spent some time in Long Beach as well, just kind of working in the office, which I, I did a little bit of, and you, you, you kind of you know, you, you, you see what's going on and you begin to understand how many people are working on what things. And 
I, I guess what that taught me, and I don't want to sound like some kind of shill for Zwift or, or making excuses, because we know there are features that, that we've been waiting for that have not come along quite as quickly as we would have liked it. But the thing that, that hanging around Long Beach showed me and talking to a number of people, actually, some of them quite informally, was that, God, this stuff does take an awful long time. I mean, it just does take time to build new worlds and draw new maps and do extensions, doesn't it? Yeah, for sure. You can see that. Look, there's a few transparent walls there in the office and uh, <laughs> walking around, you can see uh, you can see people working super hard and like they're, I mean, they're really, really into what they're doing. It's good to see. I mean, they're so passionate about what they're doing, but I guess back on the technology, they've, they've got their own engine. So there's nothing they can just plug into mm. and there's nothing proven out there. So again, it's like, it's, it's a clean slate. And we've seen this many, many episodes ago that they've, they've created reality again. They've created trees they've created time they've created roads and i mean this is from scratch this is not a pre-built anything so it, these things do take time and when you build them yourself uh you're in full control which is fantastic we can do anything with it but there's also that slowness so that's probably why things are a little bit sluggish um but uh as for the teasers oh, I'm, I'm not sure about too much about the teasers because that just sets the expectation and we've seen yeah. with timelines things can push out you're quite right about expectation i mean i had a, a a chat with John. I mean, you know, I actually asked John directly why they don't release trailers, and, and expectation was 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 certainly part of his argument. Anyway, we do know this stuff coming, and uh, it is it is really exciting, and and I, I think we're going to start see see it rolling out quite soon. Um, I think our next story kind of puts all this stuff actually about people online playing an online cycling game maybe complaining about not getting shiny new things as quickly as they'd like i think our next story sort of put, <coughs> excuse me puts that into perspective a bit rachel elliott is one of the strongest women in zwift a fantastically strong rider um in real life she's a record holding time trialist She's a tireless volunteer in real life cycling. She does loads and loads of organising of events. She's a semi-professional violinist and she actually holds down a pretty high-powered job as well. Um, and she's well known in the thrift community and having met and spoken to, to Rachel several times, she's, she's, she's a good person. Rachel's a really good person and a very, very strong cyclist. She was training on Zwift when she suffered a, what turned out to be a stroke, a very serious stroke. And that was a couple of weeks ago. Now, Rachel, as people will have seen, is, is thankfully recovering or on the road to recovery. And she is well enough to talk about what happened. So I caught up with her in hospital. Here's Rachel. I started my session at quarter to six that evening. Um, and I was only in the easy part. I was zone two at the time. And... Um, the six o'clock news headlines came on. I had the TV on next to me and it was quite a disturbing headline. And I remember thinking, I started to become dizzy and I thought, is it, <laughs> am I really that affected by this headline? <laughs> and then I realised it was um, a bit more serious than that. And I, my first thought was, damn, I've got to stop my training session. <laughs> then I realised I was feeling quite a lot worse um, and, and thought I was fainting um, and um, lay on the floor. Um, and then my vision started to go. Um, and I felt like my head was exploding. Uh, I somehow managed to dial 999 um, and get the ambulance coming. I can't really remember too much about it. I... It must have been terrifying, Rachel. It was absolutely terrifying. I think the worst thing was just not knowing what was happening. I think for me, I think if I thought, you know, you're having a, a stroke or a brain hemorrhage, you get some pain. But I had absolutely no pain whatsoever I just had these sort of neurological symptoms as soon as I got to hospital they did a CT scan and, and it was revealed that I had quite a, a major bleed right in the center of my brain um, at the end of the brain stem my vision's gone double I can't see properly and um, I've also lost sense of taste as well I mean I suppose the obvious question Rachel and, and maybe the doctors haven't been able to tell you this but what I mean what what, what might the recovery look like um, no one really knows yet it's um, quite Quite unusual. I mean, most people, when they have a stroke, um, it's called an ischemic stroke, which is caused by a clot. Uh, that wasn't the case with me. It was a hemorrhagic stroke, so it was a blood vessel bursting. Um, so they can't actually see what's happened in my head until the bleeding goes down. They've 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 done the CT scans and MRI, so they can see the bleeding and, and which parts affected. But at the moment, they can't see why it's happened. And they won't be able to for probably a couple of months, when hopefully the bleeding will subside. 
Uh, Rachel, I'm sure I'm sure I'm not alone. You know, in in people who are interested in in athletic ability and looking after themselves, in being so incredibly shocked that this should happen to somebody as as fit and healthy as you are. I, I'm, I'm guessing the two things are just completely unrelated. Yeah, I mean, the doctors have been quite quick to say it's almost certainly not cycling that has caused this. And it's something that I've just had in my brain all my life. And it just so happened that it happened when I was cycling. Um, so, I mean, as, as you say, most people, when they have a stroke, it's caused by sort of lifestyle issues or, it's, or that's a pretty major factor, you know, smoking, obesity. I like to think I'm none of those. I don't smoke. I'm, I'm, I'm not. Well, you know, I could probably do with losing an extra few kilos. But I'm so... Um, so um yeah it was a it was a real shock and a real eye opener and it's completely taken me back down to earth i mean the week 12 days ago i was you know on quite a sharp fitness curve and i i've got a coach for the first time and i was looking forward to the new season and my power was higher than it's ever been and i thought wow this is going to be my year and then in a split second there's just been this massive outpouring of, of love and care from you, from the community, and, and manifested by by Glenn from your race team, and, and will be well known to Zwifters because he runs Zwift Power, bringing in this this kind of um, well, I was going to say contraption, but it's more than a contraption. I mean, it's something that will enable you to turn your legs. He's got a set of P1 uh, 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 pedals for, to get some power, and Zwift have been kind enough to to provide an, an iPad. I mean, the the support you've had from the community must have been really reassuring and comforting to you i imagine yeah i mean i I think it has and i think before um this contraption arrived as well i I have to um give a massive thanks to the ladies community as well because they've all clubbed together there's a a community of um race organizers from all the different teams on zwift and they've clubbed together and got me goodies and and the ladies in the zwift racing team have all clubbed together this contraption arrived yesterday with Glenn in in the Royal Barks in Reading and I was taken aback by it I mean um, he first handed me the box um, which was um, just a normal computer box I opened it and and found this iPad Pro hidden amongst all these Zwift water bottles so Zwift I mean donated me an iPad Pro I mean I don't think you'd ever get another sort of software company that would do that maybe you would but i mean that shows just how much they care about their community i mean i'm, I'm one person amongst very very many zwifters and that degree of personal care i mean these gestures they're so important when something like this has happened i would think yeah i mean obviously it was masterminded by glenn he had this i, I can't sit on a bike at the moment and he had this idea that it would be nice for me and not just from a physical perspective but I get so much out of the, the community on Zwift. So just riding with other people that he could somehow get this desk bike, which is used to help people in offices just turn their legs around. And um, he managed to get hold of this bike and miraculously <laughs> managed to fit these um, power pedals onto it, which, again, I mean, that was provided by, by a gentleman called Russ Crowder, who's on the KISS racing team. He owns a, a shop in Jersey called Pedal Power Jersey. And um, he supplied me with these P1 pedals. I mean, power pedals. That's not something that comes cheap. Uh, do, do you sort of, oh, it's a horrible cliche. I'm sorry for putting it in these ways. But but do you do you sort of dare to hope, Rachel, that, that you'll get back on a bike in something like y- your form? I, I'd like to think so. I mean, and this, this will certainly help. I mean, and you've used the cliche. I'll use a cliche. It's um, all these sort of messages from people, they they're going a massive way to help me. And I think the positivity and uh, is just going a huge way. And excuse me for getting a, a bit emotional, but it really has helped. And when I got on that bike last night, we can call it getting on a bike. And um, I just couldn't, I can't believe the the support that you know, people are giving me. Look, I, I, I won't prolong this. People will be, you know, so so pleased to hear from you. And you sound, you know, you sound like the Rachel I've interviewed before, Rachel. To be honest, <laughs> you know, you you really I'm still you, the same Rachel. <laughs> um, how, how long do you think you'll be in hospital? It's likely to be about a month in total. And just just want to thank all those, I think, thousands of people who've who've given me messages of support and love. It's incredible. I just. Yeah, I can't make sense of it still. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. thank you. And I 
I certainly don't feel I deserve it. And I'm just, yeah, immensely humbled. You do so. deserve it, Rachel. You absolutely deserve it. And listen, <laughs> it's it's great to hear you sounding like Rachel. I mean, I know I know there's bits of Rachel that are not working so well at the moment, but you know, it, <laughs> there's bits of Rachel that sound like they're working very well, and that is that's fantastic. My brain's fine. Yeah. Tell me that. Yeah. <laughs> it's fantastic to get that that update from you and to, to hear you sounding as upbeat as you possibly can be. Um, just great work, Rachel. I mean, stay strong and you've got so many people rooting for you. I know. And it means, it means the absolute world to me. So thank you to everyone who's sent their support. It's, okay. It means the incredible amount. Nathan, you've commentated on Rachel racing must be hundreds of times. Uh, you must have been as shocked, if not more shocked than than anybody else when you saw this. I'm so thankful to see that Rachel is getting well. But the response has been amazing. There's yeah. been the, um, obviously, the, what we saw in the video, commentating in every single race that I have and group ride and et cetera, there are messages continually, especially mm-hmm. right after um, Rachel suffered the stroke, that there was message after message after message going through all the feeds People in the, the chats, uh, in all the live streams, continually talking and um, sending out good vibes, prayers, whatever they want to, uh, whatever they do, uh, in times looking toward hope. So it was really cool to see the response from the community, especially. The hashtag yeah. Get Well Rachel was everywhere. I saw it everywhere. And yeah. uh, really encouraging to see the community be so supportive. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. It was a, a, an incredible response from the community. Shane, uh, it was shocking, but for some reason, when it's an when it's an an athlete, um, it's even more shocking. For some reason, I don't, I don't I don't know why. When it happens to an athlete, yeah, I think we can relate to them. We're all Zwifters together, um, and Rachel's out there. She's won a lot of races. We all know who she is uh, and how you know, well she's done in all the racing. Um, and what a nice person she is as well. So yeah, to, to, it, it feels close to home, I guess. So yeah. it's been fantastic to see the response though, the amount of likes and the amount of love hearts and the amount of everything that's been happening. The post on Zwift Riders, if people haven't seen that yet, please go over and give that a like yeah. or just yeah. give it a comment or just, just watch it. Just view the, the, the love that's been shared by the Zwift community. It's, uh, it gives me goosebumps actually to see yeah. that kind of support for somebody going through uh, yeah, what she's gone through. Yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree. The, the community reaction was, was truly, truly amazing and heartwarming. Shane, I mean, the thing that happened to Rachel, I mean, it came, it came out of a clear blue sky and, and, mm-hmm. and random and incredibly rare. But it, it did make me think, do you have any routine, and I'm not saying screening would have picked this up, but do you, do you have any routine medical screening you do? I no, I don't actually. I, I know the ins and outs of the, uh, the 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 medical departments throughout all my crashes and my racing incidents and things like that. So I tend to steer clear. But no, but look, I'm turning forty this year. I'm going to have to start doing that sort of stuff. I know there was a screen your machine um, promotion about prostate cancer for men. Um, so yeah, I sort of clench at the thought of that. But look, this is what we have to do uh, to ensure health. But there's so many things you have to account for, and 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 lots of things are not. You know, you know, they're not going to be, get picked up by, by screens. Nathan, do you, do you do you get a routine medical screening at all? I mean, I know with 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 the system of of health in America that that they kind of encourage those kind of things, don't they? The, the, the insurance companies. Yeah, uh, but no, <laughs> no, yeah, but no. <laughs> uh, well, we, uh... fair enough. Do you can turn yourself into a into a shocking hypochondriac if you if you start worrying about all these things that. That may possibly happen to you. Anyway, um, the very, very, very best of luck to Rachel. She's so strong in mind and body. I'm sure her recovery will be as rapid as it possibly could be. Okay, onwards. Well, somebody who Shane and I have both met in recent weeks and who is a relatively new hire at Zwift is a guy called Jordan Rapp, ex-pro triathlete. He's been very busy. We're going to start seeing the fruits of his work very soon. There's a huge new overhaul of ZML. Um, And Jordan's a really interesting guy, actually. I mean, his name will be familiar to some, but but probably not many, except except people who, who follow triathletes. Um, So I thought it was a really good time to find out something more about Jordan Rapp, the man, the athlete, and in fact, the game designer. 
I guess I have the good fortune of looking reasonably uh, similar in real life to my avatar on screen. So, <laughs> so it's like, I guess suppose among those who know me most will probably know me as a pro triathlete. And not just any pro triathlete. Jordan Rapp is a multiple Ironman winner and ITU long distance world champion. Three of his Ironman wins came after he fought back from a terrible accident when he was left hooked by a car whilst out training. He gave the details at an Ironman press event. The car pulled out in front of me. I went through uh, a window, uh, shattered the glass, it severed two jugular veins, and the guy left me to bleed out uh, on the road. Spent uh, 18 days in the hospital, didn't know if I'd ever race or compete again. But Jordan did come back, and like many athletes, he used the indoor trainer as part of his recuperation. But he didn't like it very much. I thought, okay, you know, I'm going to come back, I'm going to ride the trainer because, you know, I'm afraid to... But it was just so boring. That, of course, was pre-Zwift. Remember that? Jordan took to the trainer again, this time on Zwift, as part of his long-term commitment to the charity World Bicycle Relief. My first ever Zwift ride was in December of 2015 in what was then the first of the World Bicycle Relief uh, Zwift-a-thons. Yeah. I took part in that first uh, as a ride leader and then sort of shelved it for basically most of 2016. But last year's very wet winter in California drew him back again. It was raining so I rode Zwift and then it was raining again so I rode on Zwift and like a lot of things once it became sort of just a habit then I find it, found myself enjoying it more and more once I started to progress in levels, once I started to recognize people that I knew once I started to see other friends of mine once I start you know at this point also workout mode uh, was an option which it hadn't been when I first tried it in 2015 so I thought oh I'll just build the workouts and then do those workouts. Around this time Jordan's thoughts began to turn to what he might do after the end of his pro triathlete career. I had never planned to race past 38 and I'll turn 38 this year so I had been doing it at that point for over a dozen years, right? I mean, it had been, I sort of knew kind of what to expect, I think, uh, both of myself, you know, mentally, physically, from a business standpoint, all of those things. Um, so I had been receptive to the idea of finding something else to do. Jordan and Zwift had already spoken a little about him creating workouts for the platform. Then he got a call. I heard from uh, John Mayfield, the creator and founder, uh, he called me and said, yeah, we'd like you to have to write you some content for us, um, workout content. And one other thing, you're probably not interested. I know you're racing all of that, but uh, you know, we'd be interested in having someone come on board. You know, he said, I've done 100% really of the game design to this point, but I'd be interested in bringing someone on board to help if you're interested. He was, and shortly afterwards, Jordan joined Zwift. So what's his brief? Certainly the focus that I have here is on what I would call structured training, Zwift as a training tool. I try and think of, you know, how do we want Zwift to be architected, not in the sort of strict definition of architecture of code and code base, but more, I think, sort of what is the framework of the design uh, that we're going to have going forward and, and trying to contribute there. Much of Jordan's work is going to be focused on beefing up the platform's workout mode. We're going to try and make what I think has always been an underappreciated part of the program more accessible. I've never understood people who said that like, oh, Zwift doesn't have good content, right? I've never found a workout that I couldn't create effectively in the workout creator. Um, I think we have a really rich library of existing workouts. I mean, I think some of the training plans that we have in the game are from some of the best coaches in the world and the training plans themselves are incredibly effective. But they are admittedly somewhat cumbersome, right? The presentation's lacking. The presentation is lacking. So I think we have great content. The workout creator is incredibly effective. But finding your way through all this stuff and navigating it, you know, managing your workouts, all of that stuff, that certainly has left something to be desired. And I think that's what we really want to improve. The inevitable question is whether Zwift is planning to take on Trainer Road with its huge workout library. Trainer Road has done a great job, right? It started as a three guys and it's now a 48 person company. I have no, people who love it, love it, right? I mean, it's a, I think the thing that I've never understood, right, is that, like, it's funny when I started writing some of the workouts for group workouts and they said, okay. And I said, well, I only really have like three workouts that I do. 
right? Like in a year, yeah. I basically have like three workouts that I just sort of roll through. And other than that, I just sort of go out and ride, right? But I mean, it's not like yeah. training for pro athletes is not complicated. And so I think there's this idea of quality over quantity, right? I mean, like the four week FTP builder plan that we have in the game from Kevin Poulton. I mean, Kevin is a remarkable coach, right? This is Kevin's plan. Like from my standpoint, like I just finished doing it. I saw a great increase uh, in my FTP. Like, if you were like, okay, you could have that plan, and then other than that, you just free ride and do some races. Like, that's all I would need, right? Like, I mean, that's that's it. So I don't really understand this need for like, oh, we need an enormous workout library. I'd love to have ten, maybe fifteen good plans covering kind of the basics, the five or six kind of basic cycling disciplines, and then maybe a beginner and an advanced version of each. I, you know, I never want to say like where we have so many libraries that you just have this endless choice. I mean, I'm, I'm a big believer in what they call Barry Schwartz, uh, who is a researcher, um, the paradox of choice, right? Where you want to have choice yeah. between like three things, not 30 things. And so I'd like to have everyone in Zwift to feel like they have a choice. To me, ideally, I want, would want everyone in Zwift to say, I have a choice between three good plans. That would be perfect for me. If everyone felt like they had a choice of, of three good plans, I would be happy. Well, possibly not before time, Shane. It seems one thing that Jordan's going to achieve is is having a lot of love and attention directed at workout mode. Um, and I think we're going to see a lot, of, a lot of changes coming up there. A really interesting point from him, I thought, about the, the, the required size of a workout library. Um, I mean, his, his point being you can get utterly overwhelmed by choice and actually... You know, most people just do not need that size of library and would never ever use it. What, what's your view on that? Yeah, two sides of the coin there. If you see, um, there's other software out there that has a massive library. It looks amazing. You click through and you look at, oh, I could be doing this and this and this. The reality is we are creatures of habit and we usually stick to the same routine. Me, for my training throughout my racing career, the five by five intervals. If they weren't good enough, you just go harder. I love those five by fives. And then the old two by 20. So they were my meat and potatoes. They were my staple diet. So yeah, I can understand where they're coming from with like only a select few, a few quality workouts. But it depends how specific you want to get to. You need to cater for all levels of cycling and all types of cycling. So the library does need to be big-ish, but definitely not overwhelming. So yeah, there's two sides. It's it's sort of sexy to have a massive library, yeah. but again, overwhelming at the same time. Yeah, mm. yeah. I, I think that's my point, uh, <clears throat> Nathan. I mean, let's call a spade a spade. I mean, Trainer Road has, has a huge, huge library. But you know what? You can only do one workout program at one time and you can only do one session at one time i mean physiologically with your coach's hat on do, do you like choice or is it just a, a kind of illusion of value for money uh, i think there's a there is actually a desire that might be being fulfilled with lots of workouts mm -hmm. and i call them the make training fun clients and yeah. they want the workout to be diverse and always be different a little bit and so I can see that there, but it's, that's not always the most beneficial workout. And if you always need it to be different to get it done, you, you know, eventually that, that might not do it anymore and trying to make it always trying to make it interesting, but there is something to be said for that a little bit. Um, and having something different on the plate all the time. I can understand that. Uh, at the same time, uh, when I looked at trainer roads library long before Zwift, I just looked at it for about five seconds and then was like, I'm just writing my own. There's too many choices here. I just <laughs> yeah, made my own. <laughs> Diversity. Yeah, yeah. Now, I remember talking to a coach and he said, um, you know, the most popular workouts ever are those ones with the really weird shapes. They've got loads and loads of big spikes and loads and loads of big troughs, you know, and, and physiologically they may be completely useless, but visually they're highly attractive. <laughs> and his clients tended to love them. Um, uh, and speaking of coaching, um, uh, my coaching project is progressing nicely my running project is progressing slowly uh, although i have taken your advice shane and i'm going mm -hmm. to get properly fitted for a pair of, of shoes um good, good, which good. was uh, which was a key piece of advice advice from shane shane what's uh, how's your your run training going going well for the people who are watching here, if I'll pull up a little photo from this morning's run. And if you're a watcher oh. of the Zwiftcast here, <laughs> it was sunrise over nice. Lake Wendery here in Ballarat. It was about 13 degrees. So the air was just a little bit crispy. 
There was no wind. There were rowers out on the smooth lake with the swans, six kilometer run. It was brilliant. Like, I love a good ride in those conditions as well. It was magnificent. My running wasn't, my legs definitely weren't, my lungs weren't. But where I was, so if you can find yourself, so my next bit of advice after you've got your shoes, find somewhere nice to run that you like to be and you want to explore. I was out there this morning and there was runners and there were people walking and people pushing prams and the rowers doing their thing. And you could hear the rowing coaches and just being in an environment where people are you know, working really hard and other athletes, depending, you know, it's cycling or rowing or running. It was fantastic. So Yep, get up early, go out, run somewhere magnificent, and uh, it's going well. I think I can hear, like, through the screen right now, people in the West all throwing tomatoes (laughs) and whatever they can find at Shane right now about their pristine morning, 13 degrees or whatever it is (laughs) down down under right now. I'm looking outside at, like, ice. On the ground. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, it's ex- it, it is exactly the same here, Nathan, actually. We're, we're all, all, like a week of horrible cold and snow, and we just got rid of it. And I was out in the park yesterday with my dog on my bike, and there was just, I could just, you know, about 150 million miles away, there was a faint whiff of spring just, just, just in the air. The, the, the essence of it reaching me and I woke up this morning and there's four inches of snow on the ground and it's like <laughs> <laughs> so you can keep your blissful Australian mornings to yourself if you don't mind Shane I have to say also that was dangerously evangelical on the old uh, on the old run side Shane we're not, we're not going to lose you entirely are we oh no no I'm getting more rides done than <laughs> ever before here behind me here and there's lots of stuff happening on this side of things. So I'm I'm a, a, a Jew athlete. Would that be yeah, what we'd call yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, something like that yeah, now. Yeah, Slowly yeah. getting there. I'll take up park runs soon. I'll just get my 5K time down a little bit so I don't embarrass myself. Well, that's all very impressive. Um, Nathan, for those of us stuck <laughs> still inside looking at the snow outside, which is exactly what I'm doing at the moment, um, there's a bit of a new thing on Swift, Gold Rush. Tell me, tell me more about Gold Rush. I've not done it yet myself, um, but... Uh, it's like a gamey racy thing, isn't it? Yeah, so it's in conjunction with ZwiftGPS.com, which is a map essentially that loads up every hour. You can put it over so you can see where all the coins are. And different coins load on the map that is uh, currently live. And you can compete with other people on the hour every hour for one hour to get the most coins. And uh, when you get a coin, it disappears. And then another coin will load somewhere else. So it's like always spawning randomly around on the map, new coins. And there's lots of them. And there's different sizes of coins, like three coins, one coin, a treasure chest, which opens up a bunch of coins. So it's a race, but a fun race. Sounds good. Sounds very good indeed. Um, Okay, uh, well, moving on. Uh, As people know, uh, because it was on the last episode, I was at Nathan's house slash studio a uh, week, week or ten days ago now. And I did say on the last episode that we'd, we'd have a behind-the-scenes uh, glimpse at Nathan's setup and Nathan's studio for streaming. And I think I put a few kind of uh, few few little visuals on the vid- video version of the podcast when uh, on the last episode. But now I've edited it properly and we've got a proper kind of behind-the-scenes look at Nathan's setup and streaming studio, and very interesting it is too. Here it is. So, um, first thing we do is we clean up a little bit. Part of the reason that I'm here two hours before a broadcast is troubleshooting. <laughs> like, half of it is troubleshooting. You wouldn't believe the kinds of things that come up. Looks like I had Windows updates on everything, so this is gonna be an interesting start. Calling 4.2 watts per kilogram. From streaming Jarvis Island rides from his kitchen to tiny audiences. One viewer, I was happy. Nathan Guerra has come an awful long way. Here, looking calm still, very focused there, but here comes some very early power-ups there into the final now. I mean, today, front page of Twitch, how important is front page of Twitch? Uh, We'll probably get somewhere between 50 to 100,000 new eyes on Zwift today. So Nathan, talk me through Nathan Central. Oh my goodness, Nathan Central. (laughs) So this was a kitchen. Um, This over here used to be a 
kitchen sink. I'm going to move back a bit here and just try to show people how big it is. It's uh, tiny. It's not big, <laughs> is it? I, I guess it shows what you can achieve with a bit of green screen and a, you know, in a small space. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's for sure. But it's about more than just a bit of green screen. Nathan needs a formidable amount of tech to get everything working. This is my i9 7900X. Uh, it's got, I want to say 12 cores, overclockable to 4.6 gigahertz if I wanted to. Um, 32 gigs of RAM. That is a beast of a machine, Nathan. It is, it is a beast of a machine. It really is. Nathan needs a big internet pipe and that was a battle he had to fight with his ISP. It was probably a year and a half battle and in the last three to six months, we finally gotten to that point, but that's since I got that second well, connection and was able to push back on them a little bit to be, look, there's really an issue here. So what speed? So I have 100 down and 10 up. Now, still not amazing, but good enough. But so Nathan, I'm getting nervous on your behalf. The yeah, I am too. The clock's ticking. We got an hour and 10 minutes to the start. Now we need to start thinking about, so these are good to go. I can forget about these. Well, no, actually these are not good to go. Excuse me, sorry. Now I need to open up OBS. OBS you have to open up as an administrator when you're grabbing Zwift for some reason on, on most computers. I'm gonna make sure that there's no other background noises coming through because we do capture desktop noise. So I need to make sure that my Discord's not open, my Steam's not open. I love the Baby Face Pro, it's so clean, so crisp. The camera, like I said, we had a restart, so now the camera's a little bit off. We gotta do some lighting issues. Plus Simon thought it was a good idea to change my lighting a little bit here. <laughs> right, so we built all of this. So um, I need to make sure that every single scene that I'm going to use today is in my broadcast tab. I need to make sure every video that I'm gonna use today is in the video tab. All the titles are correct. All the graphics are correct, all that kind of stuff. I just do some double checks. You know, most esports are presented with just the game and the caster's voice, right? So you watch a Dota or an Overwatch, it's the game. The game is the action, right? In cycling, you get a lot of like other scenes and things because cycling has action and then there's tactical and chat and what's going on and people thinking. I think we've overdone the downtime of cycling though, part of it where we have two people chatting about what's kind of happening on screen and what's out there, and the focus becomes on their chat. I think we're gonna now go to a place where we can do more like action time, just the game, chat time, things have calmed down. Action time, just the game, and, and so we need, that has more production stuff that needs to happen. It's Tom Hargraves off the front, 12 watts per kilogram all day long, Tom Hargraves. The is, this is a hell of a lot to think about whilst commentating on a live plus race. There's, plus the action in the race. Yeah. Plus the action in the race. Yeah, it gets, there's a I, lot going I, on. Know, I mean, if, 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 if this was like a conventional TV setup, that you would be like nine people, but you're one person. It, yeah. It's an awful lot to think about. Try, try, was able to get there. We'll try and bring it in there. But what an effort all around. Tom Hargreaves, that's what I've been doing it for. every day for, for place, a year and a half. We turned the camera on a year and a half ago. First race I broadcasted. And it clicked. I knew how to talk about cycling. I knew how to be excited about anything I talk about. I'm a public speaker, naturally. Team Experimental, team manager and owner. Just so you guys know, Frank Garcia is probably going like this with his hair a little bit right now. Michael Pazeline, what are you doing? Taking the points. I bet you you're having quite the chat. Kim Little, the Hulk. The, the social media, the... The, 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 the graphics, the, what's going on in the game, they create the little nuggets that I did go down that path then. You know what I mean? So, um... On a more light-hearted note, Nathan uh, Garabingo, Nathan Garabingo... Oh my... All of the things I say now! <laughs> <laughs> no, but listen, very few things make me literally laugh out loud. That one really, really, really <laughs> did. So this, for people who haven't seen it, this was like Nathan's, shall we say, most most frequently used phrases. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? That dude just freaking moonwalked onto the tower. Uh, I, it made me pretty self-conscious, but it laugh at the same time. I had fun with it, but I also think a lot about the things I say now. I definitely think a lot more. Rogers just came out of nowhere, dude. But you know what? That was posted very affectionately. It was. Oh yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, yeah. I love those guys actually. Um, once we get to that live final though, then the rubber's really hitting the road.
racers are the ones who make the race interesting. It's when they're not doing their job. <laughs> it's when the racers aren't doing their job that I gotta start thinking about some sort of other cool things, that there are lots of other cool things going on. I mean, we've got a lot of cool stuff to show. <laughs> Sometimes I prod them during the broadcast and let them know that they're not doing their job. <laughs> Push them along a little bit. Come on, they hear me, and next thing you know, so-and-so is attacking off the front. I'm like, I even say it to them, oh, maybe they heard the broadcast. Nowhere, dude. <laughs> Uh, Nathan, I don't want to embarrass you, old Bean, but you do do an awful lot with not very much. Um, yeah, I mean, we took, we repurposed a lot of stuff. <laughs> you know, it was, it was uh, a kitchen turned into laundry room, turned into broadcast studio and pain cave. Well, pain cave first, then broadcast studio, kind of. While well, pain cave, and now broadcast studio and kind of pain cave, and still doing the laundry. So we got a lot going on in here, that's for sure. I, I, it's an amazing setup. I mean, I mean, the, the output from, uh, and I don't mean to be mean, but, but, you know, you've got such a tight space in there. But the output that you achieve from it is, is absolutely incredible. Anyway, I won't dwell on it because pe if people have, have just watched or, or listened to that, that you know, they'll, 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 they'll see for themselves. And I don't want to embarrass you, but you do, you do an absolutely amazing job, I think. Um, Shane, I've noticed uh, your kind of production values are, are, are on the up as well, actually, talking about uh, achieving, you know, more bang for the buck. Green screen, lots of green screen now. I saw you having a play with 360. Um, you've got to keep moving forward with this stuff, haven't you? Yeah, for sure. Look, there's a few tricks of the trade as well that I've just picked up on. That green screen was not purchased for what I'm using it for at all. I purchased it for the streaming stuff so I could just blend in. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, hang on, I can pull it up behind me. Whoa, that changes everything. I can now be inside a website to talk about what's going on or inside footage. The 360 stuff's very interesting. It's very contextual that where you can use it and where you can't. Um, I couldn't really use it here because you'll see everything behind the camera that is a mess. And what I enjoy is the problem solving behind the scenes for a few things as well. So, I mean, you can see it if people watching at the moment, I've got the little pop thing for the mic now, it's clearer. And just today I went and bought a... Uh, a, a pounce cat toy. <laughs> so seriously, these these little things, and what that does is stop the microphone wind. So when I'm out on the bike, I can talk to the camera on the bike and it's super crystal clear. So just those little tricks. They don't have to cost a lot. I mean, my little cat toy here was $3. Yeah. <laughs> little lapel mic under the jersey. And what we've heard, I mean, this is an audio show. So good audio is super, mm. super important. Yeah, the visuals can be a bit shaky, but if the audio is good. So it's just playing around with that. And I, I love that problem solving side of things. And if, uh, again, my core value is to you know, bring better experiences to people about you know, Zwifting, riding bikes, being active. And if that can help with a few little tricks of the trade, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's going to go onto the channel and it's going to just keep right, things rising up. Yep, absolutely right. And, uh, and well done. I mean, your, your videos are getting, uh, getting better and better all the time. Um, Shane, so I watched your Rocket Play video. Uh, very interesting, a really kind of thorough examination of it. But uh, man, oh man, you caused a little bit of upset in <laughs> in in Rocker Plate world. I mean, I think I, th I think I think what people were saying was really interesting set of tests that you did on it, and we'll we'll talk about that in a minute. But you could have. Mm -hmm picked a slightly better design rocker plate to do the kind of definitive llama test and you know no uh, i don't want to disrespect bob but bob's <laughs> i've seen i've seen more sophisticated designs than bob's i have to i do have to say that so so what 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 do you think i mean do you, you know is this well what do you think of your method what do you think of what people have said about your your methodology Hmm. First of all, it has, it's been amazing. So the response to the video so far, 11,000 views of that video on YouTube in under 24 hours and one death threat. It's, I mean, that's just YouTube. That, that's fantastic. And it wasn't from the Rocket Plate crew. It was just some random, which was dealt with. But uh, I mean, if you get rando comments like that, you know, something's quite popular and it has sort of bubbled up to the top. So lots and lots of views. What I was careful with with that was to present on the Bob Plate itself and my experience on that, knowing there was a lot more out there, but also some theory, some, you know, my feeling of how it ride, a bike rides and what these plates need to do or should do, because there's, there's, 
there's what I'm finding is this there's a rabbit holes everywhere on this one, especially with the the type of sponges used, the springs used, the platforms used, the dampeners. There's so much behind it. And even in the comments have been absolute gold because somebody has mentioned about, you know, the pivot points and the pendulum points maybe a little bit too low for these rocker plates. It needs to be up higher, like out on the road, which is genius when you think about it, because how a bike handles depends on where it pivots and it can feel it. Mm. I could talk about this all night, but I'll, I'll keep it brief. It was fantastic to do. It was great to be you know, to be across what one of these plates does. Um, and there's a lot of people angry out there. I didn't choose theirs or another one, but I, I am look the the front door is open. I live in a quieter, yeah, you know, safe town, so the front door is open all the time. So front door is open. If anybody can give me any other rock plates <laughs> to perform the same tests on, and the same uh, protocol. Oh, and and I'm the best part about this is I'm not I don't have any vested interest in any of these products. Pretty much like anything I review, I just get and explain my experience as a, an ex racing cyclist. Well, I like to still call myself a racing cyclist, but someone who's ridden bikes and I know how a bike operates. So bring me the plates, bring them to me. I will talk about the experience. We'll film it. We'll try and break them with the bob plate. I tried to fall off the thing. I really pushed it to its limits. I sprinted. And we even, I mean, they're they're built to go side to side. I got this thing squirming. So, you know, we're ripping out some big watts on the thing. Um, Yeah, putting it through the ringer. But I just need more. I'm I'm excited about it and and where this is heading. And as I said, at the end of my video, um, Wahoo have gone this way. The community have gone this way. So side to side, whereas by who have gone up. And then I've, I got to combine the two because I'm lucky enough to have a, a, a climb here somewhere in the jungle. Um, combining the two was phenomenal. It really, out of the saddle climbing and it was up Libby Hill and uh, Zwift effect again. So I couldn't get first place, but I was within about a two seconds or so projected, uh, projected time of being second place. So guess what happened? On the gas, 600 watts plus for the last little bit, and the climb's kicking up and the rocker plate's doing its thing, and I'm just like, whoa, this is pretty <laughs> cool. So things are going this way for sure. Whether, But how to solve this problem is the fantastic part to be involved with now. So all my feedback on that and all the comments in the community, as we've spoken about the community, which is a massive bunch who listens to the Zwiftcast. So they're a massive contributor to how this is going to be solved and having a better experience. So it's just my little take, and that video has done quite well. So, yeah, stay tuned for more. Yeah, I mean, it was super interesting that. Uh, I mean, it was your first look at them. And to, mm-hmm. to some extent, you know, first impressions are lasting impressions for, uh, as a very, very old song had as a line once. Um, and... Uh, I mean, I thought you had a fantastic turn of phrase in that video. I think you said it was squirming like a frog in a handkerchief at a particular point. <laughs> but I mean, some of the, I, I, I guess we're here really we're in experiment territory, aren't we? Because you know some of the designs I've seen would would definitely definitely have overcome that kind of movement the 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 frog mm-hmm. in the handkerchief movement that you got the one with the, <laughs> the ones with the shaft down the middle in particular yeah um yep. but but you've you've got a bit of a role to play here Shane because what you say counts I mean you do you do <laughs> obviously know that don't you well I'm scheming I'm scheming me and my new uh, fairy <laughs> friend here is scheming um, we're after we're both we both have the same philosophy here of having a better experience indoors so we can have a better experience outdoors yeah. as well so yeah. look if I can be a very small part of that and people having a better experience in the future that's that's I'll be happy with that so it's kind of cool to be um, this early on this is a really tricky one to solve but yeah. mm, lots of fun it's going to keep a lot of people busy in the workshop for sure yeah, no, it's really interesting, and I, I, I do think it's uh, it's the next big move forward for for riding inside, and particularly as we saw with, with Shane's video there on that, combining it with the climb. I mean, that was that was very very exciting and interesting, and you know, there's clearly still a long way to go to uh, heighten and uh, uh, make the the riding inside experience more different, more realistic, more fun. I mean, there's still, there's still lots of, of territory to go at by the looks of things. Um, anyway, that's it. Again, ah, there's another one gone. Um, Nathan, what's, uh, what's new with you, dude? What's new? Well, Women's Week is on the mind, yeah. for yeah. sure. I mean, that's happening. So we're going to be having a race this Saturday, and uh, that's going to be awesome. And a lot of events that we're going to be uh you know, partnering up with, with Swift, so that's going to be cool. You know, I really want, 
Talk to me well, about I birds. Know the birds. I knew we were the talk birds. I knew we were going to talk about the birds. Talk to me I knew about we the were going to talk about the birds. <laughs> you know, as it gets warmer. <laughs> You got the birds. Other day, you have birds. We're in, in the your middle studio. of a broadcast. Yes, I have birds in my studio. In the middle <laughs> of the broadcast, all of a sudden I hear this like noise of an animal. You know, you know the noise of an animal in your yeah. walls or whatever, something yeah. like making noises, eating things or something. And then it starts chirping like crazy, like little baby <laughs> birds are chirping like mad in the background, and they're in. My dryer vent, like no. they're getting warm <laughs> from the hot air coming out of the dryer. And I'm like, get out of here. And Lindsay's like, no. And all the girls, you know, they're all like, no, you're not pushing them out. Just wait till they grow and fly out. And I'm like, I can't be having this chirp, chirp, chirp. <laughs> Actually, there is chirping in Zwift. So maybe people will just mistake it for the <laughs> chirping of the birds. Maybe the, 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 the animal noises got that much better in Zwift. No, sorry. It wasn't an update. It's actually just the birds in my, in my dryer. <laughs> so I <laughs> was, so, so what are you going to do? I, I, I mean, presumably the, 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 the weight of opinion in your household is that these little chicks have got to fledge. Is that the, is that the right word? Fledge? Complete their fledging. Yeah, it looks fledgling. like they get to stay. They've been very and, quiet. And, and then leave your, your, right now. leave your vent. Is this, is this, is this the way forward, Nathan? It, it seems that's, that's, uh, where we're stuck at this point. So <laughs> they've been fairly quiet lately. They haven't been showing up. So maybe they left already. I don't know. They uh, they were in a precarious place too, like a very odd place that it felt like they could just fall. But, you know, they tend to build wherever they can, it seems like. So. Well, you know, but yeah, 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 yeah. Well, birds generally know what they're doing. You know, they're, they're good at this stuff. Um, Shane, are there any birds in your vents? <laughs> That sounds like a terrible youth. Uh, something, no, but I, I, I do have a pet redback spider. And if anybody knows a redback spider, they're one of the most deadliest spiders around. They live for about two years. They can live with about, well, I think I did my, all my research and they can live with about 300 days without food. But they're yeah, redback spider. If you Google that, I've got a pet one of those. So we don't have birds in our vents. We have killer spiders, which is, yeah, it's typical Australia. I was going to say that sounds, that sounds very, very Australian indeed. Well, um, I am going to spend the next few hours editing and then uh, snow permitting, looking out the window, uh, I'm going to get on an airplane tomorrow and go to Girona and see the Academy Girls. Uh, Tanya and Leah are now living together in Girona. They're sharing a flat. And as Nathan said, it's Women's Week um, around this time of the year. So uh, sorry, boys, but um, for the next edition of the podcast, um, you're going to be replaced by Tanya and Leah. Um, what can I do? Yeah, Get absolutely. the week off. <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> I think the viewers will be just fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. And that's that's going to be fun to do, actually. It's going to be a fun show to do. And we're going to do that from Girona, and it will go out shortly after Women's Week. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, Shane, so what's uh, what, what what controversy do you intend to stir, uh, stir up with, with the next video? Uh, what am I doing with the next video? Um, we're doing multiple apps at one time. Right. So if you're a Zwift subscriber, you, you you never want to do an indoor session without getting your Zwift case. You need to click those XP points. You need to get to the next level. You need to unlock that next bike. But what if you want to control your trainer with something else? There's a few different ways to control the trainer. And there's a few, like the standard apps that usually just come with one. So today I was on the Tax Neo using the Tax little utility to set different modes and go heart rate mode, but still clocking up my Zwift K. So I'm going to be showing people how to do that. And then uh, we're off to the beach for the weekend. It's going to be about 35 degrees. We've got a wedding on the beach for a few days. So uh, I thought I'd just stick that in there as well because you guys are with the snow. Um, I'll be slopping the sunscreen on. And uh, it's Bell's Beach, actually. So if you know surfing, we're right near there. It's going to be a good weekend away. He's just done it again, Nathan. And, uh, God, we're gonna <laughs> tomato not, head over here. What the heck, right, man? You know, <laughs> God, spring, I, look, spring just seems so far away. Anyway, let's not complain. He's gonna get that. a whole lot of Nathan Bingo out of me here. <laughs> what the heck, freaking hackers! Like, it's all, it's all coming out right here. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. come on. I know. It's not right. It, it has to stop. It's, uh, I, I think it's because it's like nearly spring. That, uh, but then you look out the window, there's four inches of snow on the ground. It's, uh, 
Yeah. Anyway, that's it. That's it for this one. Enough weather talk, enough Zwift talk. We'll be back again uh, in a couple of weeks. I'll be back a little bit sooner with the Zwiftcast uh, Women's Special Edition. Thanks very much, boys. Always, as ever, a fantastic pleasure to talk to you. Great way to pass along an hour and uh, see you soon. Thanks, fellas. See you guys. Thank you. The Zwiftcast, both audio and video versions, are made with the kind support of Zwift, which we're very grateful to receive. But we should also let you know that nothing that we say on the Zwiftcast is in any sense influenced by that support. Thank you for either listening or watching. If you watch on YouTube, why not subscribe? See you next time.